Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And today I'm doing an illustration challenge where I take band names and I illustrate them literally. So you get it, like Panic at the Disco would be someone panicking at a disco. Uh, we're starting with my favorite band of all time, Lemon Demon. Uh, now this one was probably the easiest just because there actually is a little mascot for Lemon Demon that looks like a little lemon head guy with a sharp smile, but I tried to add in a lot of little references and things to the music and I'm going to try to do that throughout all the illustrations as well. Uh, I'm not just going to illustrate the literal title of the band, but also try to sneak in as many references to the band's songs as I possibly can. So Lemon Demon is a band by um, Neil Cesariga, who is an internet guy. He created Potter Puppet Pals. Um, he famously had a song that became a Newgrounds animation uh, called The Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny. My favorite album from Lemon Demon is called Spirit Phone, and it's a sort of spooky Halloween-like themed uh, album that I have listened to probably too many times at this point. Um, so my first sort of challenge was to create the Lemon Demon, the, the literal iteration of the band name, and then after that it was all about fitting in all those little references as I talked about. So um, first of all, our Lemon Demon is holding a little, uh, like, viewing this little <laughs> toy um, because uh, there's another Lemon Demon album called View Monster, and it has one of these little, like, slide viewing things um, where you put in a little disc and you can look inside and see images. Um, so I've incorporated that. I also have uh, this character holding a telephone because for me, my first uh, Lemon Demon song that I got really into was called Touch Tone Telephone. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people really love that song. It's a lot of people's introduction. Um, and of course I had to put two trucks, uh, you know, together. Uh, on this character on a little bracelet because Two Trucks is a very funny Lemon Demon song that if you've ever been on my streams you've definitely heard it at least once I think. Um, and uh, I also put on a little dinosaur onto the hoodie of this character for um, Dinosaur Orchestra. It's another Lemon Demon album. I tried to just incorporate like all the albums I could. There's sort of an allusion to um, like three of Lemon Demon's albums. Um, and uh, after that, I just wanted to start thinking about more of the vibe of the music, like how it feels. Um, I find that Lemon Demon's music feels kind of like internet-y somehow, um, like you can kind of sense that uh, this is being made by someone who grew up on the internet, um, and so I wanted to have some like pixel pixelation and um, static stuff like that just kind of incorporating the the feelings that I get when I listen to the music and then um, for the final little portion of this illustration I put some of my favorite songs by Lemon Demon um, to the side here uh, I absolutely love this artist um, but yeah <laughs> Next up, I wanted to do 100 Gex, um, partially because I've seen 100 Gex in concert twice now, um, and it was such a great concert, and I had so much fun. I watched them in Seattle and in LA, and uh, I also thought it would be really funny to do a literal version of this particular band. So the Gex is short for geckos, and the story behind the name of the band, at least from what I looked up, was that um, the uh, lead singer, Laura Less, tried to order one gecko off the internet and was instead brought a hundred geckos. Um, so that's where the band name comes from. Um, that's quite a conundrum to be in. Um, but yeah, so I did a little gecko version of both her and um, Dylan, the uh, the other member of the band, is a, is a duo. And uh, then I just started adding more geckos from there. I knew I was gonna have to use some like patterning because, I mean, that's that's just a lot of geckos to draw. Um, but uh, so I started with this sort of set of four, and I laid them all out a couple times, and then I just wanted to fill it in with bonus geckos and any gaps. Um, uh, 100 Gex is a bit more, um, I think, of a, like an aggressive sound. Um, they're very uh, electronic kind of music, like. Um, there's a lot of use of like some really like glaring auto-tune. Um, the first song I ever heard from 100 Gex was Money Machine, which starts out really funny with like a 
kind of interesting little internet rant. Um, and I also used to obsessively listen to Haunted by uh, just Laura Less. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of 100 Gex. I put on <laughs> the hat um, that I saw at the concert that Dylan was wearing. And generally, I just wanted to differentiate the geckos with a little wash of color, sort of pastels. I knew I was going to just put this in the background and then have some more references to different songs in some kind of foreground element. But at this point, I didn't actually know. I was kind of just creating an insane, like, bowling alley carpet of geckos in the background. And I also wanted to do some chromatic aberration, which you can easily do um, with your line art just by duplicating it twice and then coloring one set of line art blue and one set with set of line art red and offsetting them with the transform tool. I decided to have um, a character's hand sort of uh, just in the center of this drawing. Um, there's a song called Hand Crushed by a Mallet, which uh, was one of my favorites to hear live. Um, and uh, then I wanted to include some other little references. Uh, the character is holding a Dorito and a Frito. The Frito I almost kind of wanted, um, like, it almost looks like a, like a ring over the finger. Um, cause there's this very funny part of a, of a song where Laura Les just goes like, and also I'm married, <laughs> so I wanted it to look like a wedding ring. <laughs> um, don't know if that came across. Uh, and then of course I had to have a stupid horse, um, up on the wrist, some money for a money machine. There's at least one other secret reference that a sharp-eyed viewer might be able to catch. Let me know if you see it in this illustration. Um, but yeah. And then here are some of my favorite songs. Next up I wanted to do Canadian indie rock band Mother Mother, uh, mostly because I immediately had an idea for this one. I right away thought of a sort of duo of two um, very classically styled mothers, like 1950s style, um, but with a sort of femme fatale action kind of vibe because a lot of Mother Mother's songs are very like, they have sort of a uh, dark, spooky, but mischievous kind of edge to them. Um, I think a lot of people get introduced to Mother Mother with the song Hayloft, um, in which uh, the repeated sort of uh, line in the song is, uh, my daddy's got a gun, you better run. Um, and it talks about a man coming out with, with a long gun and it's, it's very spooky. So I gave one of the mothers a long gun. Uh, the other one I gave, a lighter um, for to do arson with um, <laughs> because of the song Burning Pile um, which is also a pretty famous mother mother song um, and uh, yeah I just thought that the band name was really conducive to this challenge idea um, and I like the sort of duality of them they look like twins um, which I think is fun um, and uh, it sort of adds to the dark creepy vibe of the band. Um, now Mother and Mother is a more recent band for me to have gotten into, but I still really like them. Um, their song Back to School um, as well as Verbatim are some of my favorites. I'll, I'll show you all my favorites of course at the end. Um, and with the design for these girls, uh, yeah, I just tried to go like super, like it's not, it's not even 1950s stereotypical, it's like 1950s marketing stereotypical. Um, so they got, you know, the, the dishwashing gloves on, they got a little apron, super domestic vibes, but then it's clear that they're, they're here to mess some stuff up and uh, they're not to be trifled with. So <laughs> we're getting a very classic juxtaposition, um, very femme fatale kind of vibe. Um, and I think they look kind of adorable. Um, honestly, maybe I should have leaned away from the 1950s vibe because uh, Mother Mother doesn't really have a, a 1950s sound at all, but I just couldn't help myself um, and I feel like it's it's one of the faster ways to establish a character as a mother without, you know, literally having their children there with them. They've actually been making music for a long time. Um, they formed in 2005, uh, which was honestly a surprise to me when I was <laughs> researching them for this video. Uh, but they had a huge resurgence because of some TikTok um, sort of fame uh, after they released their seventh album. And I admit that is around the time that I found them as well. I found them off of TikTok and I was just like, gosh, who is this? Um, they have quite a distinct sound. It reminds me just the tiniest bit of the White Stripes, like very vaguely. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend if you like like a darker kind of sound, um, almost sort of folklore kind of uh, energy, feels like it's telling you a story. It's very cool. 
All right, this was kind of a weird idea and an experiment, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you'd like to see more uh, bands done this way and definitely try this out with your own favorite bands. I feel like it would be really fun to see everybody's like faves turned into an illustration. Uh, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thank you to all of my patrons, including Aspen, Rayons, Vorpal Matt, Brandon Stark, Jammy, CB, Ted, Crosby F, Lucy Amajiki, Finn Must Die, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, Noose Milk, Raven's Crow, Zosalot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, K, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Michael Lavali, Cutie Pie, Ruin Raincrow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, blah 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 blah.